nail gun and his collarbone, and he had a metal plate, a metal plate that had to hold it since he was like about six years old or seven years old. So I prayed for him, and me and, me and my disciples prayed for him, and I, and, and I started praying for the healing anointing to fall on his collarbone. So immediately when he went to, to, um, to, to take an MRI scan, immediately... The, the, ne the next week, he came to my house of peace. He brought, he brought a doctor's note saying that when he had an MRI scan, the metal plate completely dissolved and his, metal, and his collarbone restored completely. Come on. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, it was, cra it was crazy. So he has activated you in the supernatural. Completely. Apostle, this is Sylvia. She understands English better than what she speaks it. But she came here because she wanted to declare her testimony. She had cancer for two years, aggressive cancer. The doctor said, we need to put you through chemo. They put her through chemo. Her colon began to bleed, and they sent her home. Says, you cannot stand chemo. You need to go home. And she's like, you know what? The chemo didn't work because I'm going to come back here healed. And the doctor told her, no, you're going to come back here dead. So what happened is that wow. she continued to persevere in her house of peace. She continued to persevere with the jail ministry. And now the doctor says, oh, my God, you are healed, completely healed. The wow. test revealed that she's healed. So she was supposed to go home and die. She was supposed to go home and die. Well, he, he told me that, you know, well, I'm going to be here the next year. I'm going to say hello. I'm going to feel okay. And he said, well, you're going to be dead because you, your cancer is aggressive. Devil is alive. Then I say, I don't need chemo, I don't need anything. So now I have two years, and they may, you know, test on me, and I don't have nothing. Not wow. only that, not only that. I feel great. I feel great. I feel great even with my white hair. Oh. <laughs> Apostle, she also got healed from 12 years of arthritis. She got healed from migraine. She got healed from a gland illness. She's completely healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Awesome, thank you. What happened Pastor here? Louis, after reading your book, he started believing in supernatural and praying for Tell the people. Tell me what happened, son. Yeah, there's a, uh, a chapter in your book where you says that faith is the uh, radar where it brings the supernatural to the natural. Come on, come on. And the thing is now, Mahab only has six people, now has 87. Uh, what? Got, yeah, 87. Some of the new souls are right there right now in line. Come uh, on over here. Come on, guys. Bring it up here. Alex, yeah. Some Bring of them are right here, uh, and, and they only been there for five months or less. So your, your, your house of peace was seven people, now 87. 87. It had six people, now 87. People from Carroll City, uh, Liberty City, Overtown, Billy Bad Neighbors are going, crying in the presence of God. What's funny is that a lot of the souls, there's a, a, one of his um, disciples that now uh, has only been safe for three days. He went to evangelize yesterday, and they started moving in the supernatural. 73 souls got saved in Sunset Place. And what's so crazy is that they, they prayed, and the things the security guards were kicking them out because of the multitudes. They didn't care. They started giving a word to the security guards. One of them was atheist. They started telling them, at the age of 10, your father died, and his name was Jose. The guy starts getting impacted. He's like, you know what? From now on, you have permission to come to Sunset Place and evangelize.
they were changed, they were transformed, they received the power of the Holy Spirit. Now they continue in prayers and the sharing and partaking of meals, one another, in one accord. And then the Bible says, in the temple and by the houses, daily. There is a move of the Spirit. There is a move of the presence and the power of God in a such a way that these people continue daily in the temple and by the houses, preaching, teaching, in communion and fellowship. Listen, in covenant with one another, we see peace rest upon all churches. Two, they were edified. Three, they had the walking in the fear of the Lord. Four, the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And the end result, the churches multiply. The supernatural establishes the order, the rhythm, and the flow of God's life in us. To continue knowing God, to continue in the presence of God, one of the things that we need is to be walking in the fear of the Lord. Before I give you the definition of the fear of God, I want you to write it down what the fear of God is not. The fear of God is not a natural fear. Say with me, natural fear. fear. What is natural fear? What do you mean natural fear? Natural fear is a defense mechanism wired inside of us to protect ourselves. That's natural fear. If you find a snake in your house, would you go, oh, she's so pretty. I love you. That's the natural reaction. That's the defense mechanism the Lord uh, put in our spirit and our heart to protect ourselves. That is natural fear. Number two. The fear of God is not natural fear. The fear of God is what I call, is not the demonic fear. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. God has not given me a spirit of fear. How did you call it? Spear of fear. God has not given me a spear of fear. Whatever you fear, that's what you will attract. God has not given me and you spear of fear. Amen. The fear of God is not the phobia, it's not the demonic fear. And what does he do? The fear of God attracts spirits. It's an attraction when you're afraid of dogs. They will smell something from your body. Something is substance is being released of the body when you're afraid. So whatever you are fear of or afraid of, you will attract. If you're afraid to lose your job, you will attract unemployment. If you're afraid to lose your wife, you will attract another lover. If you're afraid to lose, listen, if you're afraid to be sick or to get cancer, if you're afraid to lose your kid and your family, you will attract demons to destroy your family, to destroy your body. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Why are you afraid? Why are you fearful? Why are you fearful now? Hey, whatever you fear, you will attract. That's why I refuse to be afraid. What do you mean, Pastor? I refuse to be afraid. Pastor, have you been afraid to do something? Yes, but I do it afraid. Pastor, have you been afraid to do something? Yes, but I do it afraid anyway. Because I know the principle. Job said, this is what the Bible says. Whatever I feared, that's what it came to me. If you're afraid of, of getting, of dying, you're attracting the spirit of death. If you're afraid to be rejected, 
Oh, that's why I don't want to go there because I know they're going to tell me no. Yeah. You're cursing yourself. You are attracting spirit of rejection to tell you no. And when you get to the place that people will say, I don't know why, but I tell you no. Are you here, people? I'm giving you principles and how to flow with the supernatural. You can be being afraid and full of the spirit. You can be full of fear, thinking, Pastor, what is going to happen tomorrow? I know the economy. I know what it's saying. I know what are you attracting. What are you attracting with your mouth, with your fear? Are you attracting something? Oh, you're attracting God. Are you attracting? Are you worshiping? In the middle of crisis, are you lifting your hands and worshiping God? In the middle of sickness, are you saying, Devil, you're a liar. I'm a body. I'm a temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm not attracting sickness. I'm not going to speak sickness. I'm I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm going to worship God. What are you attracting? Touch your neighbor and tell him, what are you attracting? Come on, say it. Come on. So what fear is not? Natural fear. Number two, it's not demonic fear. Number three, it's not religious fear. What do you mean religious fear? Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. What does it say, Pastor. This is what they said. <laughs> he said, they honor me with their lips, but their heart are far from me. That is religious fear. And what does he do? Write it down. Religious fear is taught by men, not by God. Number two is superficial. Only affects the external appearance of the human being. And number three, religious fear produces, produces, what does it produce? An obedience that will take you as a slave. For example, this is a religious fear. If you live my church, God will bring sickness upon you. If you go from this church, God will kill you. What is he using that person is using? The spirit of witchcraft. The spirit of manipulation and control. Jezebel. And is trying to control people. If you don't do this, if you don't give me an offering of $10,000, sickness will come upon you. Trying to manipulate people to get something. That is religious fear. And people do things out of fear. Number four. I keep, there's a lot of things to talk about. The fear of men. What the fear of God is not, the fear of men. Say it with me, the fear of men. Yes. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. And the fear of men bringeth snare. Bringeth snare. What do you mean? <laughs> it will stop you from obeying God. And two... It will stop you from trusting God. Those two things, the fear of men, will do in you. It will make you a slave. Why are you talking about the fear of God? Because in the middle of signs and wonders, in the middle of, of outpouring of the Spirit, in the middle of big miracles and, and great powers being manifested in the book of Acts, the fear of God was the main theme. So what the fear of God is not... Natural fear, demonic fear, religious fear, and the fear of men. No, so what's the fear of God then? Write it down. What's the fear of God? The fear of God is the reverential respect. It's the reverential respect to God. It's a holy awe. It's a reverential respect to God. Respect, honor to God. And listen, and this is a, 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 a great fear of not displeasing Him. There was a moment when the presence of God has been in such places where I didn't want to move. I just, I just feel the awesomeness of God. The reverential fear was on me. It was not phobia. It was not demonic fear it wasn't the fear of men it was the fear of God oh. 
do we need the fear of God today? Oh my God, it has to be restored in church. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. If you have it, say amen, shout it. Verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, who's him, Jesus. And the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of might, the Spirit of knowledge, and the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3. And shall make him a quick understanding and in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Neither reprove after hearing of his ears. So my question is. This was the fear of the Lord operating in Jesus. If Jesus without sin needed it, the fear of the Lord. How much more we do. If Jesus, being the Son of God, spotless, without sin, needed the fear of the Lord, how much more us as believers? So the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jesus. So we need it today? Do we need it? That's what operated in Jesus. Now, when you go back to the book of Acts, again, the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 31. You will see there that the churches throughout Judea, Galilee, Samaria, they were edified. One, they were edified. They had peace. Number two, they were edified. Number three, they were walking in the fear of the Lord. In other words, you can't be uh, casting out demons. You can't be healing the sick. You can't be preaching and teaching without the fear of the Lord. So... Do we need the restoration of the fear of the Lord in the church? That's my question. Do we need the restoration of the fear of the Lord in church? Yes. I didn't hear you. Yes. But before I bring you the restoration in church of the fear of the Lord, let me bring you something. Where men lost it. What did he lose it? In the garden... The Bible says the serpent came to Adam to speak to him, to his wife. But the Hebrew, when you go to the root of the Hebrew, it gives you the idea that was not the first time the serpent came to Eve. In other words, the serpent came many times. Let me put it this way. And the serpent came to Eve. It was not the first time. Number two. Why is it that his, her husband did not take authority over the serpent? If God knew when God created man, the devil was already on earth. Why he didn't take authority when God said, I give you a power and authority to, I give you authority, period. You will dominate. So when the serpent came, it was not the first time. The idea that the Hebrew brings is that it was many times before. So that tells you, where did he lose the fear of God? The fear of God, hello, the fear of God was lost when Adam and Eve began to tolerate. The fear of God was lost when you began to tolerate. In other words, listen, men was created to coexist with the enemy. Coexistence is different than toleration, than tolerance. You, Jesus said, you live in the world, but you don't do the things of the world. That's, we co coexist with the rest of the world, with the rest of the people. But Jesus said, Father, do not remove them from the world because they need to be the light. But they can tolerate what they do. So, 
what he's saying is this. The serpent came and spoke. The Bible says spoke. Before the fall, the animals spoke. So before the fall, the animals talked. They say, hey, Eve, can you give me an audience, an attention, an appointment? Adam was next to her. What happened? They tolerated the enemy. What you tolerate, you cannot have authority on. Believing God has touched your life. Praise the Lord. So I want to, I don't want to close this uh, program before, uh, if you allow me to pray with you. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer out loud with me. Whatever you are now, if you're saying, Pastor, I feel lonely, I don't know what condition you are now in your home, uh, your marriage, your finances, and you're struggling, you feel lonely, you feel empty. As a matter of fact, you're drinking, you're saying, Pastor, I don't have any way out. Can I pray with you? Can you allow me? And I lead you into this prayer. The Bible says we are sinners. We sin against God. And the wages of sin are death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Who is the eternal life? The eternal life is Jesus Christ. He came to die for your sins and my sins. If you believe, if you repent of all your sins, Jesus Christ will come into your heart and will save your soul. Can you repeat this prayer after me out loud? Say it with me. Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner. Say it out loud. Whatever you are, I believe with all my heart. Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe God the Father. Say it with me. God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Amen. If you did this prayer with me, I want you to call me, and I will be praying for you also. God bless you. I love you. See you next time.